one match will be between Tom Ross and Brad Nelson. Uh, let's look at their deck lists, actually. Uh, I showed you a flash of Tom's deck list. He's on Mono Black Warriors, which looks pretty sweet. I, I'm, I'm genuinely curious to see how this plays out, because, I mean, this, this is clearly a deck that's at least close if it's not real. I, I mean, I did you test the Warriors deck at any, at any point? We, 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 we've tested various iterations of this deck. Uh, I don't remember exactly which formats, but I mean, just the cards Pain Seer, Mogi's Marauder, Tormented Hero, these are all fine cards. So, it, And I, I look at a card like Blood Soak Champion, and it seems pretty clear to me in looking at that card that R&D thinks this is a real deck. Like, they attempted to plant a Warriors deck across the last block. Maybe it's Mono Black, maybe it's Black White, but like, there's all the tools there you need to have a Warriors deck to be competitive and standard. And I think that the addition of something like Mardu Strike Leader is kind of interesting. And Obelisk Avert is actually a big part of this deck as well. If you can curve out and play a quick Obelisk, then your, you know, your 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 cards actually do a ton. Sure. Brad Nelson, meanwhile, let's look at the deck he brought into battle this week. Brad is battling with, for the first time the entire season, by the way, Green White Devotion rears its ugly head. Master of the Unseen, Devotion, all the Megamorph creatures, all the green shenanigans. Now, this, this is certainly a deck that can lead to uh, incredibly long, sort of drawn-out matches, but I wouldn't think it's going to do that in this matchup. This feels like a matchup where either Tom wins it quick or Brad just totally takes over. Yeah, and I don't think that... Uh, that it means that Brad's deck is bad in this matchup, even though Brad's deck obviously is built to generate millions of mana. Mm -hmm. it, it just means that those tools are not really how Brad... Like, Brad's not going to need to activate Mastery of the Unseen 17 times to win. He's just going to need to get into a position where he could activate it three times. Mm -hmm. you know? So it, I do think that, uh, you know, we've seen Whispered Elemental and Pelucranos do a really good job against aggressive decks, uh, assuming they come out fast enough. And uh, Tom does have main deck self-inflicted wound. I wonder if he was... <laughs> Watching Brad make his deck because they live together. <laughs> Funny. Or, or that Brad, I think, has played a deck that gets hit by self-inflicted wound by just every time. Basically so every week. He, he played Marty Dragons, which still has Seeker of the way. Sure. He played Van Heroic. <laughs> Marty Dragons. Yeah. Abzon aggro. Yeah. Esper Dragons one week. Just to mix it up. Abzan. Yeah. I, uh, I am genuinely curious to see how this plays out. Like we said, Brad Nelson can still make the playoffs, but he's got to win at least twice. He might need to win the whole league, depending on what if on if Josh keeps winning, or he might be able to tie Paul Chion for third by making it to the finals but losing there. And we are ready for the match. Let's get down to it. Down to it. Brad on the top of your screen, Tom on the bottom. That does not look like a great draw from Tom Ross. No, Brad's hand is like uh, a solid 9 out of 10, maybe 8 out of 10. Tom's hand is like a 3 out of 10. That's a 6-card hand, too, for Tom. Yep. Already took one mulligan, and that's what <laughs> and, and Brad and is on the play. And you lost the die roll? Oof. This is, uh, this is not good news for Paul Cheon, is who this is really not good news for. No. Paul clinging to third place in the overall standings. Tom's hand is honestly not very far from a hand you would get in the game of Limited. It's like a two-drop <laughs> removal spell into like a Mardu Strike later. <laughs> the question is, do you Bile Blight the Elf? It's, I think it seems very reasonable to me to do so. Like, what is your Bile Blight going to hit if not that? You're playing against a Corsair deck. Fair. Well, he did not buy the like the elf, and Polucranos comes out on turn three. Yeah. Jeez, which one of these guys is the beatdown deck exactly? <laughs> turn two, Corsair. Turn three, Polucranos. Turn four, Whisperwood. Turn five, Scoop. Is that how this game plays out? Yeah, it does not look good for Tom. The question is, does he play one of his cards and reveal what he's playing? He could just Scoop here. Like, playing a third Swamp is still is still a pretty big reveal. It's a little bit of information. Yeah. yeah. I like it. I think Tom's absolutely correct. Just don't let Brad know what's going on, because this game is lost. Paul, Paul said he, he's going to go watch the Warriors game, but 
you know, the chat put it out. This this is literally the Warriors game that Tom is playing <laughs> Mono Black Warriors. So Yeah, no spoilers on the basketball. I'm I'm hoping to survive to my DVR after the after the show tonight. Let's see if I make it or not. Anyway, yeah, Warriors game. Pretty nice. Um sideboarding do anything to this matchup? I mean, is either of these guys gonna have anything specifically here? I would imagine that Tom's gonna get some some more, you know, decent removal. Brad uh, so Tom has self-inflicted wound and murderous cut, and he gets to replace his bile bloods, which I think are fairly mediocre. The the thing is, Tom is playing an aggro deck. He still wants to go one drop into two drop into three drop, and he's got obelisk converge. So he can't really take out all his creatures. He needs some amount of creatures. So that that that's twenty nine creatures in the main deck, which is kind of where he needs to be. I mean, his his list is twenty nine creatures, ten spells, twenty one lands. Yeah, and that's why I don't think, even though you might want more removal, you can't take out that many creatures, if any, to, to bring in removal. So Tom's just going to get some removal spot upgrades. All right, what about Brad? Take a look at Brad's list, and Hornet Nest is actually kind of interesting. It's very good against ground mm -hmm. idiots. The thing is, Brad doesn't know exactly what Tom is doing. <laughs> like, yeah, Brad, Tom's playing a deck that can mulligan into Swamp, Swamp, Concede. Yeah, Swamp, Swamp is a the bit second of a tell. Swamp, yeah. Like tech, even if that technically could be an Esper Dragons or an Obs on deck, it's just not that likely that they, they they drew two swamps. Yeah. So then you're like kind of thinking like you know what what deck could this be? And Mono Black's on your radar. The question is, do you side in a such a targeted card like uh like Hornet Nest? Like probably not. Probably not. I think you just run it, run your base deck. I don't want to commit and misunderstand. It is Tom Ross. Like he may know that Tom's been working on a Warriors deck, and Tom's the kind of guy who likes to play a lot of aggro decks. I mean, the fact that it's Tom combined with Swamp Swamp might lead you to Mono Black Warriors, but I mean, the deck has been so invisible. Yeah, it's hard. It's to not get. not the first thing I think of. That actually, <laughs> this situation reminds me of something that happened to me during the Modern Grand Prix. I uh, so I'm playing I'm playing Grixis Twin, and I play against my opponent. And my opponent mulligans to five and concedes after playing two Scalding Tarns. Okay. And after I've been doing click, and at that point, I'm thinking like. All right, my opponent's playing like Grixis or Grixis Twin. Those are the most played decks in the in the field. The opponent played two Scalding Turns. Yep. I sideboarded with that assumption. My opponent goes to game two goes turn one Mountain Goblin Guide attack you. <laughs> I reveal Thought Seeds on top of my deck. <laughs> Ouch. And then turn two attacks me and I reveal Dismember. So I I I, <laughs> I, I did not win that game. <laughs> Yeah, right. red fetches are red fetches. Scalding Tarn probably is the most misleading red fetch. It is. My opponent, I think, did that on purpose, especially since I wouldn't put a burn deck on having no plays turns one and two. Oh, sure. Who won game three? Not me. Uh, <laughs> my, so opponent, my opponent wisely gave up game one percentage because my opponent was not 0% to win game one, clearly. Yeah. They, even, even if my opponent's hand was bad. But gained a lot of game two percentage, and then game three, I lost a, just game three on the play, and that, which can definitely happen. All right, a better draw from Tom, in that he's got a one drop to attack with. Carry added can kind of hold things off. He just mogies Marauder and and smash with Intimidate. Well, you you would have, but you do Paints here, which would have been an insane draw on turn two. On turn three, it's significantly less impressive. You still might play Pain Seer here. You don't get to attack with the Tormented Hero, but you do get to play turn four Obelisk. So it looks like Tom's just going to go a little more aggressive. I think I like this line. It sets you up to do two things better on a future turn, like having a two drop rather than a hand of three, three, and Obelisk. Yeah. And you get through the four damage, so. This isn't too bad. The second Marauder is going to be really important. Tom cannot use those lightly. Fair. All right. Brad plays Corsair Crucifix. Misses, so... And really misses, too. <laughs> oh, he's going to draw third mastery next turn. Does not seem like the card he wanted. So I would assume that you just go Obelisk here, and then next turn, if you draw land, you can go Pain Seer Marauder and just win. Hit for 16. <laughs> You don't want to go pain seer self inflicted wound this turn. You could. You 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 assume you're killing an elvish mystic, but yeah, I kind of like the temptation of just drawing a land and just winning the game. Yeah, I mean, I like it seems your pretty pet. strong to me. I agree. 
All right, so he's going to play Obelisk of Erd. What creature type do you think he's going to choose? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with the Warriors, though I, I think human would actually work here. <laughs> so Warriors, not Cavaliers. Got it. Looks like he, it looks like he went with Oh, he does get human. Hilarious. That might overlap with more creatures in his deck. Really? I would assume so. I mean, that's what hey, he... Yeah, I'm sure he's figured it out. I'm just mildly surprised. Oh, the Mar the Marauder is not a warrior. Oh, well, he's a Marauder is a human berserker. A berserker. <laughs> a sure. Berserker. <laughs> if you were to ask me what defines a berserker and what defines a warrior, I could not tell you. So. I think it's what block they're in, perhaps? <laughs> what planet they're on? What plane? All right. Brad plays Master of the Unseen, and... Looks like he's also got Death Disruptor queued up. So the question is, if you don't draw a land, what do you do? Probably you just run Pain Seer and uh, Self-Inflicted Wound. Yeah, and it looks like all the warriors in the deck are also human. So it's a human deck, not a warrior deck. Warrior's a cooler type, so I'm just going to keep calling it a warrior deck. Same. So land allows him to go... There's the land! Yeah, that's he gets game. to go Pain Seer into Mogisi's Marauder. All of these guys are pumped up by the Obelisk because they're humans, and they've all got Intimidate because of the devotion on Mogis Marauder. Well, there you go! <laughs> On to game three! That wow. was, a, that was not, a, not a slow match. No, that is, Tom was not messing around that draw. I like it. So stakes here. Tom Ross is through to the playoffs, and Tom Ross is going to be playing next week. He's in second place. He, I don't think he can be passed. Well, he's definitely going to be in the second versus third game, no matter what happens to him this week. But you know what? I think he'd love the chance to show off some more with this Warriors deck. Sorry, Humans deck? Warriors deck. I keep calling it Warriors deck. I think that uh, Tom's good draws seem like they beat Brad's good draws, uh, just because there's not a whole lot Brad can do. He can't really interact all there. Luckily... Uh, for us, I'm I'm getting people telling me what the definition of human of ber berserker and warrior are in the chat, which is oh. which is good. <laughs> uh, historically speaking, berserkers were subsets of warrior of Celtic origin and or Celtic origin, and then they talk about you know more things. <laughs> magic been consistent though. I don't know that magic's been consistent, though. I think that if you uh, what you should care about there is if you're if you're saying creature types matter is if can someone look at these two different cards and tell them apart. Yeah. I think warriors and berserkers don't really pass the smell test there, but uh, you know, I, I don't know what each flavor uh, the flavor of each block dictates. <laughs> right. the uh, The deck is still, I think, a warriors deck, even though you might choose humans on obelisk. It's the the bloodshin warriors are the relevant cards here. Uh, yeah, the rager. bloodshin fanatic lets you sack warriors. Uh, bloodshin rager makes your warriors hard to block. So those are there are more warrior synergies in the deck than human synergies. It just turns out with Obelisk, you're going to choose human. All right, here we go. Game three. Can Brad Nelson stay in playoff contention and keep Paul Cheon sweating? Well, if Brad doesn't draw a land turn two, he's, yeah. he's going to lose the game on the spot, I believe. Because Tom's going to play a uh, turn one uh, Shadow Spear, or, or sorry, Bloodstoke Champion. If Brad doesn't draw a land, he plays an Elvish Mystic. He oh. does draw a land. All right, so now now we've got a game. Because if Brad hadn't drawn a land, he would play a second Mystic and get bile blooded into Oblivion. Oh, that, yes. But Brad gets to play Corsair of Cruffix. He's going to be drawing Nykthos next turn, we can see. Does not get blown out by bile blight here, so game on. Still has no white mana for this least main. But he can play Pelucranos next turn. Depending on what Tom knows. So Tom could attack with his Blood Soak Champion here, and if Brad blocks, just Bioblight the Corsair. I don't think Brad's going to block. Well, actually, Bioblight's not a card you might have in your deck at this point, so I wouldn't be surprised if Brad blocked under that assumption. That doesn't seem completely unreasonable to me. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, the attack kind of makes you smell Bioblight. Yeah, it's not... Tom's capable of bluffing here, though, for sure. Tom is definitely has that reputation, which makes people more likely to call your bluffs, which makes your non-bluffs better. Uh, and then... Yes, you can technically recast the Bloodsoak Champion, but that's not really a good use of your turn too. So I can't, I can't imagine that Brad's factoring that in exactly. He's thinking about it. He takes it. All right. So Tom's not going to get the Bile Blade. Instead, what? Pain's here. 
Pinchers the play with more upside if things work out, yes. That's what he decides. Mastery on top of Brad's library. If Tom can kill his Pelucranos, which he can't currently, then, uh... Ooh. Wow. I see, because you're going to oh, use Nyxos, okay. yeah. Okay. That, that makes your Bioblood a little more appealing, and it does mean also that... Hmm. Now That's Tom... a pretty good start from Brad. Definitely. Now Tom is actually in a kind of tough spot, because if he attacks and gets blocked by Corsair, he has to Bioblood Corsair. That's pretty unfortunate. If you buy like the Elvish Mystics, it makes it so Tom can add, or Brad can add four mana with Nykthos, but if he's a land under the Mastery, you get to Pelucranos for two. Yeah, Tom's in trouble. He needed a third land here. He's, he's Despite having all spells that cost, you know, one, two, or three mana, the fact that he's on two mana means he can only cast one a turn. He has six spells in his hand. Mm -hmm. And, not to mention Brad's Pelucranos is just really bad for Tom. <laughs> yeah, Tom kept two land and hasn't drawn any Brad kept one land and has drawn two. Yeah, that second land from Brad was the big swing. And now Tom starting to get pinched for not drawing any of his own. All right. Well, there's not a land on top for Brad. Well, that, that's the that's start. You yet. Brad can't cast anything this turn. He can't cast anything next turn if he doesn't draw a land under a Whisper or he doesn't have a land under a Whisperwood. If Tom can draw Self-Inflicted Wound to make Nykthos that much weaker, like Self-Inflicted Wound is an amazing draw here. Pelucanos mm -hmm. can pick off only a one toughness creature right now. And Brad has three cards in his hand he can't cast, and that card on top of his deck he can't cast. Brad's position is a little precarious. It's not. It's certainly not horrible. Brad's, I, I would say, ahead here, but Tom's one card away from being very far ahead. Charge! Wow, Brad's getting aggressive. Into the red zone, Brad Nelson says. I don't know if I love attacking with the Corsair there. I guess you do get to kill the champion if you want. It looks like you're just going to, but man, it means the pain seer. I guess the pain seer gets a lot worse once you're once you're taking seven damage here, or eight damage even. Yeah, it's eight. Eight's not a small number. All right, Tom needs to draw self-inflicted wound, and if he does, I think he's in he's in very good shape. If he draws a land, he's actually not in horrible shape. If he draws another spell that he can't cast, that's going to be problematic. Wild. Yeah, I don't. Anything. I don't love the fact that there are Bioblights in Tom's deck. I don't really understand that card in this matchup. I mean, it kills the Elves, I guess, is important. Maybe you want, like, one or two, but Tom's drawn two so far, and they've been... Well, the, I guess one was pretty good, but... Oh, and there's the land underneath the Whisper. Yeah, it's going to be tough for Tom to beat. Tom was already having trouble beating the board, and Whisperwood is just, like, a windmill slam. Definitely. Wow, yeah, now Brad's got... Still so doesn't have white mana, but he's got gigantic creatures that Tom can't remove. He's ahead on life. He's ahead on board. <sighs> Brad Nelson wants that playoff spot. Yeah. And uh, if if it's Brad against Josh in the finals, that's uh, that means Paul has no chance of making the playoffs either. Correct. If it is Brad against Josh in the finals, then Paul's dead. He just doesn't know who he's dead to. We got some semis first, though, and we got... Uh, Ryan Kibler and Andrew Cuneo looking to avoid last place. So Brad Nelson does win here. Uh, Brad is now through to the semifinals. Uh, we can take a quick look at the bracket before we uh, take a break and get set up for the semis. It's going to be Brad Nelson against Andrew Cuneo. Um, it might be nice to, to actually chat with, with Brad as we get set up for the next game. Um, they, will, they will play second. The first match that we're going to watch is the one between Brian Kibler and Josh utter Layton. Brian must win if he wants to escape last place. Josh must win if he wants to make the playoffs. And then keep winning. Yeah, things are set up. Thought this was going to be a cool night. And uh, all the storylines seem to be coming together in the semifinals. So we're going to take a real, real quick break. We'll be back momentarily with semifinal action. Stay tuned, guys. 